would like to start with a small addition to the myth of the banknotes Max referred on, because um, it was supposed that the, um, the architecture on the notes is not existing. Well, actually, you're in a place where you're 15 minutes remote from the bridges on the backside. The MIG was extended by a, a Dutch artist who um, thought, well, if the, the, the bridges on the banknotes are non-existing, let's build uh, these bridges and, uh, you know, make all the Japanese tourists visit our small town of Spijkenisse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're looking for a nice um, field trip uh, in the, the, the next couple of days, there's, uh, you can visit these seven bridges. Okay, well, I'm not um, here to talk about bridges, but um, about graphic design, actually, I would like to talk. And um, I'm playing a bit but because my presentation is on the screen, which is hard to read, but um, I'll try and do my best. Uh, I would like to compare graphic design, uh, it's a bit funny maybe, to water. And um, that's because of its, its omnipresence. Um, you know, people depend on it, but hardly anybody questions its origin. And people only start to talk about graphic design or water when there's a lack of it or when it's contaminated. So I'm Dennis Elbers. I'm the founder and director of the Graphic Design Festival. And um, I wasn't ed educated in uh, graphic design, actually. I was uh, educated in fine art and printmaking. Uh, I grew up organizing events, and by founding this graphic design festival in 2008, I managed to combine my passion um, and my talent. And since then, my practice evolved uh, from being an independent curator um, on, on the field of graphic design uh, without any theoretical background. Uh, um, but I don't see this as a disadvantage. I try to use it as an advantage to look at um, the current role of designers um, in society from a more um, inquisitive perspective. So not from a designer's perspective. And uh, while the video is running, um, I'd like to emphasize on the fact that 24-7 um, we're on the, under the influence of screens, of papers, of magazines, of packaging, posters, um, numerous other media. And we seem not to be aware of the fact that all this stuff is designed, designed by thousands of graphic designers, designed by, designed by fellow human beings. Um, these guys and girls designing, um, they actually provide structure to our world. Um, they steer our attention and they shape uh, new insights. And therefore, I think, I believe, uh, designers can help us to engage uh, with, a ch uh, with changes in society. And in my practice, I, um, I try to convey this message uh, to actually two target groups, designers and well, maybe today I can call them the ordinary people. <laughs> the people out on the streets are who are not designers. Um, I hope to get designers more aware of their role, um, of the role they can think of themselves in society. Uh, while I try to learn um, the ordinary people uh, to be more aware of how visual communication influences them. So by means of, of public interventions, workshops, uh, lectures, uh, master classes, um, I tried to get this ball rolling. And important uh, for me is to do this in a way that that bridges um, the museum world, the, the very formal uh, transfer of information, of inspiration and knowledge, uh, and our daily environment. Uh, I think, um, you know, in this daily environment, the same happens as in this museum world, but then in a more spontaneous and more informal way. My mission is to connect these two worlds, um, in, which many people still see as separated, um, but I think they actually have a lot of, uh, in common. So, so with very current and very tangible subjects, we like to express the role of graphic design in society. Um, we all know about the joy of uh, creativity 
and uh, we like to use this thing called play to discuss uh, design's ability to influence people um, in relation to, for instance, politics, uh, sociology, um, psychology, and technology. And with the Graphic Design Festival, we like to be a platform that starts and maintains a conversation about this subject. And for the presentation, I just use some works that we have been uh, presenting over the years. And probably uh, you know that presenting graphic design in an exhibition or some kind of public event in which the design is not intended for is not easy. Uh, projects are designed to function in a specific context, um, to fulfill a certain need, um, to be available for a limited of time, actually, sort of referring to the moment, stage, and memory um, the Open Sand theme is, uh, is about. Uh, it takes a lot of effort uh, to show how various projects are, are related, or um, actually, it's, it's a design challenge in itself to get this presented. And I'd like to use stages of um, confrontation, of information, and of activation, and in this specific order, also to, um, to provide an experience for the spectators. Because I think the audience really needs um, to be involved in order to, uh, for us to convey this message about graphic design. Um, this is something I learned by doing. Uh, Personally, uh, I really need to do stuff in order to think about it. Uh, whenever I start thinking before I do stuff, stuff never happens. You know, the perfection uh, wins over the spontaneous um, surprises. So I truly believe that, um, you know, do stuff and then things will happen and you have food for thought. Um, I believe we need to create experiences uh, rather than insight. And in the next few projects, I would like to, you know, briefly go through what I've learned so far and how I came to this, uh, this opinion. Um, for me, personally, it all started uh, back in 2006 when we made a show called um, Aiki. And, um, of course, we all see um, it's um, Ikea in reverse. And in, in our gallery space, uh, we created uh, a sort of Ikea experience. Uh, there were many rooms um, which, were, which had like uh, the, the same situation as you have in IKEA when you walk through all these uh, domestic environments. And, um, but the difference was there were, the objects in there were not mass-produced uh, Swedish design stuff, but actually there were functional artworks or um, experimental design products or prototypes even. And people could actually live in this show for uh, several hours per day. You could even sleep here. So rather than looking at design projects in, a, in the design exhibitions uh, without being able to use what it's meant for, we created an environment in which you could use everything that was in the exhibition. And um, there, were, um, there were really, really... Uh, uh, experimental uh, objects there, like beds made of out, uh, out of used rugs, but people actually fell asleep uh, um, on it, and um, it, it was great fun having such an exhibition. And also, we had we had uh, sleepovers. There was a wedding. Uh, there was a, a sauna weekend. Uh, there was roast. There was kids hanging out playing, and mainly it was a lot of fun while learning about these designs. So creating uh, an experience is, is all about the activation of, of multiple senses. And um, a good project, a good example, is a project I did with a French collective called Anti-VJ um, in 2009 in the, the Cathedral of, of Breda. Uh, this is a building. It's in the city center. The city is built around it. Everyone knows it. Everyone passes this. Uh, posited on, on a daily basis, but you ever never n know the history of it. You never know what happened there, or you know, only older people do. But but especially the young generation is not really aware of the history of the place. So for a museum night, and, and this is back in in 2009. So this is in the early stages of video mapping, 
um, and something that has become almost a commodity. Um, you know, we were still uh, uh, pioneering to get this done at, the, at that time, and you can also see this by the resolution of the video, like high definition was not available then. Um, but we managed to, to create um, an experience using video mapping, uh, the uh, organ play, you can actually hear it here. And this was all used together with uh, animation, sound and light design. And altogether this experience told the story of this, um, of, of the building. Uh, within 10 minutes and um, it was spectacular but was what actually struck me the most that afterwards young people were coming up to us saying wow we didn't know about this history of the church and that it had been on fire or that it almost collapsed and uh, you know we, we had shivers down our spine from this experience so you know this this all looks very cool but um, the, the response from the audience we, uh, meant actually quite a lot to me um, anyway, this is an, uh, a project I did together when, uh, with Trapped in Suburbia, and it was a museum show about explaining what a designer does. And instead of creating something you can only look at, we decided to create like a, a studio environment uh, with physical objects and challenge people to start designing themselves offering them uh, a proper assignment, so there was some sort of client involved, uh, there were tools involved, and there was also a deadline involved. Um, so within a certain time frame, people could work with all these physical elements. Um, cameras were up in the ceiling, um, making a registration of, of what was designed, and uh, as soon as you were finished, or at least when the deadline was finished, um, this was all documented uploaded online and could be shared with uh, with others. So in this in this way, um, you know, kids to uh, to uh, um, to even elderly people were were designing here. And uh, one thing that, that struck me most in this project that once I walked in the museum uh, room and it was on an afternoon, it wasn't too busy in the museum, and two people were laying down on the floor naked because they wanted to do a fashion uh, cover <laughs> shoot. <laughs> so stuff happens in the museum. Um, another fun project I worked on um, was called Letterproof Time, actually with Timon, who's in the audience today uh, as well. Um, and um, it was a project that actually originated, I think, around with the Witzstraat. Um, and uh, they were offering uh, a workshop experience together with other designers working on stuff. And um, for our graphic design festival, I, I invited or actually challenged them to make a more public experience, so to involve the audience and not just do uh, an experience for designers only. Uh, and they came up with this really cool concept of uh, laser cutting all these uh, these shapes and then offering people a place to uh, to play with uh, with all these elements and first we did a test in uh, at the Chaumont uh, graphic design festival uh, where they mainly worked with kids and then uh, a few months later we did it in Breda when where there may, were mainly older people working with them on uh, creating all these um, these cool designs and working with designers and actually getting their hands dirty and not um, spending too much time behind a computer screen. Um, but also you can use experience uh, in getting more serious stuff across. Um, this is uh, a few photos of um, a show I made uh, about visual storytelling and it's based on uh, four different perspectives. Um, the designer is a as an author, as a journalist, as a scientist, and as an agitator. And just, uh, this is all speeding up a, a bit too much for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, we challenged the audience by confronting them, uh, or actually the show was set up as a large 3D infographic. And in order to um, 
to learn about a work, first when you would uh, encounter one of the chapters, you would see all this text, and on the other side there would be the image of the project. So you, there was no chance of looking at the project and reading the captions at the same time. So you had to decide whether, you know, uh, do I uh, try to get this visual story without any explanation, or do I want this explanation at first, or uh, do it in reverse? So it was was uh, a nice challenge uh, for the audience also to get rid of these uh, the idea of captions in a show because often when I observe people in a the museum they see a work and like they look at it for a second and then they turn for the captions and this is something we want to uh, to do in a different manner and but still also uh, supply uh, of course some you know, information about the project More fun stuff uh, I did with Indiana from uh, Belgium, from Antwerp. Um, we done a project before together uh, with a machine they call Longhand Publishers. It's um, sort of a pen plotter printer. And here we designed a physical Photoshop. So using uh, contemporary technologies, uh, but also um, more ancient uh, concepts, uh, we enabled everyone, designers, non-designers, to uh, collaborate on working, a, uh, on, on creating a magazine. And uh, this show is, is also touring, and it was actually also displayed on this street here uh, last year. And it's a lot of fun to be working with these elements and to actually experience um, how you can play around with shape in order to get a, a, a visual meaning across. And uh, for this, we develop workshops for children, and uh, it's, it's a way for us to express them what a designer does without using all these abstract terms or uh, really difficult uh, theoretical stories behind it. Um, one of the projects I'm, I'm currently involved in is the next. It's called uh, the, the Three Sack Gallery, and it's a gallery um, which is open all day, every day, uh, as it is in the entrance of a car park. And um, as far as I know, it's the only drive-by gallery in Holland or maybe even uh, beyond. And it takes three seconds to pass the entrance. So that's why it's called the three-second gallery. And in the entrance, there are 50 posters. And in this way, uh, we challenge both the audience but also the designers to create something that will stick out within these three-second time frame. So it's about creating this moment uh, creating content that will stick into your memory within a split second. Um, and I really enjoy working with uh, sort of non-spaces like uh, like a, a parking, uh, a car park entrance. And um, currently we're, we're developing um, a project together with Trapped in Suburbia. We'll be talking later at OpenSet uh, later this week. Um, and they have the concept of sound posters, uh, posters that are interactive, which you can touch in order to generate sounds or even mu create music. And um, in September, we will open up a show with them with posters that actually create sound by cars passing by. So it's becoming interactive. And uh, it's nice because people, if they go out to parking a lot, they have to walk past the posters again. So. There is a second chance for them to uh, to look a bit more close to uh, to the posters. So, basically, like you know, we're trying to get this this message across about what designers do, um, how they function in society, um, what it takes to be a designer, um, in what context they uh, they function, but in a very playful manner. And um, we're currently working on our, our new festival, which will be held um, from uh, September 25th. Um, we've got many projects coming up. It's been crazy busy getting it all arranged, but it will be a lot of fun. But also some really interesting stuff. Uh, we have an exhibition, Resolute, about uh, how design creates social change, but this social change also changes the way designers deal with their practice. Um, this is a show which is currently touring Europe and um, we had such positive feedback. You know, the, the, the biggest compliment ever given to me was um, um, an Austrian head of design for an art school saying, well, I was sort of fed up with my job as a designer, but this exhibition truly 
showed me that there is different perspectives uh, on what I do, and I really want to. I have new energy to look at my uh, profession in a in a new manner and start doing stuff that actually matters. And it was like the biggest compliment you can ever get organizing these shows. So hopefully um, you stick around longer than open set here in Holland and come to uh, to Breda in uh, in September or October. I got a lot of shows, talks, workshops, lectures coming up, and. Um, I'd like to see you there. Thank you.